record too today up to the point where it may freeze so first thing is molarity what is the molarity of a solution but what's the equation for molarity moles divided by liters now Here's, here's a way I guess you could think about it. Molarity. So, Ooh, that makes a lot there's an L in that word. Yeah, and there's an L in your equation, which is? Liters. 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 This one's fairly straightforward because it's 5.22 moles divided by 3 liters. Piece of cake, right? And Becca, Becca will solve that for us because she's our math girl. 1.74 capital M. All right. Yeah. It's just pure straightforward. You're already in moles and you're already in liters. No, 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 no. I, I, I get what this is, but like, I think when I see a question like this, they don't really like. Is there a question where they, you have to find molarity first or something like that? Well, there's going to be an equation where we have to find moles first. Because they want to know molarity, which we said is moles divided by liters. But we only have grams. And so you need to have this equation, molar mass, equals mass over or moles, yeah, mass over moles. So there is this. So we rearrange this equation to moles is, whoa, boy, it's having a fit. Moles equals mass divided by molar mass. This is all algebra one, correct? 40 grams, and what's NACL weigh? What is it? Uh, 23 plus 35 and a half, 58.5 grams per mole. And so, 0.68, so this is 0. 0.68. That's the moles. So now, to do molarity, capital M, is going to be 0.68 divided by 0.5 liters. What do you got? 1.27? 37. M. All right, and this one, they're trying to throw you off a little bit. So what's the molarity of a gas solution? This and this. It doesn't matter if it's a gas or because it's a, it's a solution. It's just gas. So you're just going to do the same thing again. Find the moles first. Oh, shit. So it'll be it'll be thirty-two grams divided by thirty-six point five. So zero point what? Eight eight. So then it's zero point eight eight divided by three point four four liters. 0.25 molar. Boom. Done. Nothing. These two and three are the same. You have to find moles first. Quick question. Yep. Are there going to be like, like, like first special softness of the No, nope, other than. No. But there will be some rounding. Like I'm typing it up right now. 
and one of them was like two point two point one one six two point one two. So, but it's going to be pretty obvious if you get two point one one. Well, if you get two point one one and there's two point one two and two point, I mean, there's going to be an obvious right answer there. So, you know. It just round up or down according to the third. For the multiple choice. Part. Yeah. Mr. Quimbo, is that 0 0.88 gold? Yep. Okay. Now, now they want you to go backwards. They wanted you to find mass of silver sulfate. They give you molarity. Oh, come on. There we go. And they give you liters. And we just said mol molarity equals moles over liters. They gave us 0 0.022 moles. I'm going to put an arrow there. Equals so many moles over 2 liters. So what we've got to do is work backwards now. And mass is equal to molar mass times moles because we just rearranged this one up here all right so moles here equals 0 0.22 m times 2 liters which will be 0.44. Yep. 0 0.4. Oh, 0 0.44. Thank you. 44 <laughs> moles. I forgot the 0 0.22. So let's change colors. This is going to be 0 0.44 moles. Now we have to figure out the molar mass of Ag2SO4. So we got silver, sulfur, and oxygen. How many silvers? Two. Times, would we round it off to yesterday? 108. Again, if you, if you don't round, the answer should be in the right vicinity. All right, so that's 216. How many sulfurs? How much sulfur? 32. Number 16. It's number 16. And. Yeah, so it can only be three times divided by two. It's always. If we only have a big one, can we cut it to that size? Yeah. Okay. Nine and eleven. What do we get? About three twelve. Does that sound right? Did I do the math right? <laughs> okay. So then we got three twelve grams per mole times zero point four four. Oh my gosh. Uh, what do you got? 13.73. Grams of AG2SO4. So is that thirteen seven three the final answer? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. <laughs> now we start out with 50 milliliters 
of 6.0 molar HCl, right? But we want to go up to 400 milliliters. So what's the new molarity? How many times did we increase? So 400 divided by 50, that should be easy. We diluted it eight times, so the molarity is going to come down by a, a factor of eight. So six divided by eight. So this will be 0 0.75. Well, this you can use this one that we used before, the molarity times the volume, initial molarity, initial volume, equals the final molarity times the final volume. So if we do 50 times 6 divided by 400, should be 0.75, right? Because you got 300 over 400. Yep. Yep. Because we use this when we were doing the titration too, so it's it's the dilution equation too. You just change initial and final to acid and base. Now let's change colors again. Yep. Well, that's titrations when we did the, the little thing in the, what do you call it? Microcells back there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm Ionization is when everything breaks up like there, or something breaks up. Are you sure? what unit is it on five? Hmm? Oh, yeah. There we go. All right, this one times 100. Is this the percent composition one? All right. Yep. So, what's our solute? How much? One gram NaCl. How much solution do we have? We got 300 milliliters. Of water. And how much does water weigh per milliliter? One. One. So how many, mil how many grams we got? So 300 grams of H2O times 100. It's going to be really small. What's under a gram solute? Yeah. Solvent. Solution or solvent, either one. That's per, that's percent composition of a of a compound, an element in a compound. Same equation, basically. This would be, it's this. So like the small one over the big one. Yeah. So like here, we got one, two, three. Well, we got three, six, eight people in here. Don't count me. What's the percent of girls? Six out of eight, 75 percent, right? So percent composition can be is always the individual divided by the total. And our total solution is 300 meter, milliliters. Okay. So... We got 1 divided by 300 times 300, or 100, sorry. So it's 0.33%. And you do the same thing for this one, too. It's going to be 30 divided by 250 times 100. 12. Is that 12?
Now, got to use this, and these. this will be on the test, one of these little charts. I think this is only on the written part, but it may not be. If there's multiple ones of this on the multiple choice, I will give you a paper copy of that. So you can just don't have to keep flipping back and looking and stuff. So here's what we got to look at first. What's our, element, our compound? It's going to be in 100 grams of water, which makes life easy because this is 100 grams over here. And at 20 degrees, so we got to find K and O. It's this line here, so we find 20 degrees, go up, gets a little weird in here. Thirty. Let's call it thirty-four. If you if you're if you're off by a couple and it's on the written, don't worry. Then we go to sixty and it goes all the way up here, so it's about a hundred and eleven ish because it's a little slightly above, slightly above the hundred and ten line. Now. Remember, what's the most soluble at 20 degrees? So how much, that's the one. So we got, let's go down here. This is KNO3. NaCl is right here. KClO3 is way down here. And NH3 is right there. So, whoop. So at 20 degrees, it's the NH3. And remember we had that one question, the extra credit? The colder the water is, the more ammonia dissolves in it. Remember that? So that kind of maybe gave you a clue to start with because the ammonia line does this weirdness here. Now at 50 degrees, it changes over. Here's KClO3, here's ammonia. Here's sodium chloride, and then here's KNO3. So at 50 degrees, it's the KNO3. So that's, I'm assuming this, if it's like this, is going to be on the written part. Now, potassium nitrate, ooh, they threw in words instead of formulas. That's KNO3. So at 50 degrees, we can get in about, let's call it 88 grams per 100 grams of water, but they say 150. 88 plus 44 because... No, because you've, you've, you've put another 50 grams of water, so you only can dissolve half as much. So it's going to be 88 plus 44, which is 132. Because at, 100 gra at 50 degrees, 100 grams will hold 88. How much will 50 grams hold? Half as much, because you got half as much water. So you just add them together. Now, let's change colors here. We got 50 grams of potassium nitrate in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees. So we find the 40 degree line. Um, at 40 degrees, water can hold about 68 grams of KNO3. We put 50 grams in. Is it unsaturated, or super saturated, or saturated? It can hold 68, and we only put 50. Unsaturated. So, because he's still 18 short. <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right. Now, this, this is a little trick question. It's not bad. It's not bad. So we go find, we got to find NaO3 and 50 degrees C. So NaO3 and 50 degrees is about, yep, eh, yeah, 114. Again, it's going to be, if you show work and you put 14, 114 or 115 or 113, as long as you show the work, you're fine. So we're going to say it's 114 grams of NaO3 in 100 grams of water. Now, what's the molarity equation? It's moles over liters. Well, 100 gram. Let's let's go up here. 100 grams of water equals how many milliliters of water? One. Which is how many liters? One. Zero. Zero point one liters. So that's taken care of. Now we have to convert 114 grams of NaNO3 into moles. And we said way back here, is where is it? Where is it? Oh, okay, thanks. Um, Moles is mass divided by molar mass. All right, so moles equals mass divided by molar mass. And we have 114 grams, correct? Because that's how much we figured out was in there. And Becca looks like she figured out the molar mass of NaNO3. Got 48 plus 14 plus 23. Is that 85? Yeah. 85. 85 grams per mole. So what is 114 divided by 85? 1.34 moles, and so then molarity is going to be one point. Would you say three four or four three? Did I three four, three, four. moles divided by zero point one liters, and what'd you get? Thirteen point four m. So, not too bad. Wouldn't it be nice if classes were just this size? That would be nice. Yeah. My physical. Well, maybe, maybe just one from that table. Hey, uh, everyone's a good guy. Everyone's good. But, but um, in college, my, what do you want to call it? Um, physical chemistry class only had ten kids in it. Students. So. But it was really boring, and I fell asleep right in front of the teacher. <laughs> so. All right. Now, disorder. Does anybody remember what delta S, if it's positive or negative, which oh, ones? Entro, that's that. Entropy? Yep. Entropy and enthalpy. Entropy and enthalpy. Entropy and enthalpy. Oh, no. This is this unit. Is that going to be a randomness? What, 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 what? Okay. Oh, that. Entropy is the increasing, and decreasing. So, entropy is delta S? Yep. <laughs> now, Gibbs free energy tells you whether it can happen spontaneously or not. 
And see if I can find it here real quick, which I can't. Um, I can't remember because I'm so tired right now. Which one's which? Okay. There we go. Okay. That's it. Positive is non spontaneous. All right. Where is this shoe? Negative is spontaneous. All right. It's kind of the opposite there. Now, got to balance the equation. And so we got one, one, two, four. So we got to put a two there, right? And that throws off my carbon. So I got to put a two here, which gives me eight hydrogens. I always do the hydrogens and oxygens last. And we got an eight. Now, this is becoming more ordered because you're going gas, gas to liquid and a gas. All right? Liquid's more ordered than a gas, right? So this is becoming more ordered, which means your entropy is going down. All right? Now, we go over here, we got one, one, and we got three. We gotta always have an even number. So if I double this, I gotta double this. Um, so now I got two nitrogens, two nitrogens, I got four oxygens, and I got two plus two is four. But now I went from two things to three things, so it became Nope, Le more disordered, so this becomes positive because you ended up with more stuff. It went from gas, 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 but it broke up and became more disordered. All right. Now, this, this is where it gets all weird because it, some of it's not counterintuitive, but this is the heat of reaction here, delta H. And positive means it's sucking in energy. Negative means it's releasing that energy away. All right? So if it's pulling in energy, it has to pull in energy. It gained energy, so it's got to be endo. All right? It's like when you put your hand on here, the table's taking energy out of your hand so it feels cold, right? So... The feeling of hot and cold is just an energy transfer going back and forth. So endo is positive. Yep. Exo, is Exo means you've lost all that energy. And so, so like when we did the thermite, that was a highly exothermic because you felt the heat standing way back from it through a glass door. All right. Now, this is where it gets funky. Now, this is where your goal is. This is the goal. Right over there, behind her. There's white, white on top. There's a whole... No, we don't. No. It's on the computer. Because it's nine pages long and the whole department decided not to copy it. If you want to print it at home, which you can't because it's on your laptop. You guys are getting new airs, I guess, this summer. Now, you're getting new air, MacBook airs this summer. Now, 
kids. We're going to look at here. We got we need two hydrogens on the left, two carbons on the left, and two oxygens on the left. And then this guy on the right. We go down to our first equation. Where is the C2H5OH? On the left or the right? It's on the left. So what we have to do is reverse this equation. So we bring in two CO2s plus two H2O's goes to C2H5OH plus two O2's. We had to flip it around, and then this becomes positive 875. All right. Now, we got C's, O's, and CO2's. All right, but how many C's do we need up here? Two. So we got to double this, Two. and if you double, you got to double everything. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, All right. That. Now, and if you doubled the whole equation, you got to double that. <laughs> we didn't flip it around, so it still stays negative. So, and these. I wish we didn't have to zip through stuff in chem so much as, as fast as we had to, because some of this stuff gets fun if you're a math geek. So we had to double it because then it becomes negative 789.02 because we had to double the equation. And then, so we've taken care of the carbons, we've taken care of this. Now, hydrogens. How many hydrogens we need? We need four. No, right there. How many hydrogens? That's four. Two H2? Two H2. So, I mean, how many four. H2s do we need? Two. Two more. So we got to double this. A half becomes, if you double a half, it becomes one. And we doubled the water. And then we got to multiply this by two. So 285.8 times 2 is five, negative 571 because we didn't change the direction. All right. Now, we're going to not worry about this guy because we flipped him around, right? Now we're going to cancel stuff out. Got CO2s on the left, two CO2s on the right. They cancel out. And we have no CO2s in our target, do we? Got two waters on the left, two waters on the right. They cancel out. And this is where it gets a little weird. We got two oxygens on the right, two oxygens on the left, but we got one left over, but we only needed one up here, right? Got our two hydrogens. We got our two carbons. Now you have to do the... Math. So we got plus 875 minus 789. So 875 minus 789.02 minus 571.6. Now, did it give off energy? So it's exothermic. Yep, so it's exothermic because it's negative. So this is where you just got to remember this is what you're shooting for. And so you just work your way down and flip things around. And remember, if you flip things, the sign changes. If you double <laughs> things, you got to double the stuff. Yep, because we doubled these equations right here and here. We had to double the H's over here. So, now we got, a, we got our little equation here, right? So, first question, is it endo or exo? It's exo. Because it's minus. Entropy increasing or decreasing? 
So minus 98.7. What was it? It's is it getting? It's decreasing because now look, and you can look at it. Got gas, 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 liquid. So it's becoming more ordered because it's going from a gas to a liquid, which is more ordered than a gas. Correct. So that's and that's borne out by the negative sign. All right. Then calculate Gibbs free energy, and that's one of your little handy dandy equations over here, which is delta G equals delta S, or H, sorry, delta H minus T delta S. All right. And T has to be in Kelvin. So delta G. Yeah, let me clear it up for you. There we go. So our delta H is minus 346.7 kilojoules. And this is another thing where you got to think again. And it's going to be what's 25 plus 273 is 298K times... That's, but it's a negative 98.7 joules per Kelvin. Uh-oh. So, we got joules here, kilojoules here. So, you got to change the units. What I would do is you can either... This is 346,700 joules because kilo means 1,000. You can multiply this by 1,000 to get joules or divide this one by 1,000 to get kilojoules. So it's your choice. I'm going to do it this way. 6,700 joules minus 298K times a negative 98.7 joules per Kelvin. Now this is where you got to be careful. Minus 346,700, right? And then you got 298 times 98.7. You got minus a minus 29. 412.6 joules. A minus times a minus is? So it's going to be minus 346,700 plus 29,412. Remember your Algebra 1 or what do you got? All right. All right. So now that's negative. Now we go back up and we look for negative, and it's spontaneous. This is a spontaneous reaction. All right. Because it's negative, it's spontaneous. All right. What? I think you have 319 at 317. Oh, it's 317? All right. Now, the only thing you're going to change here, guys, for this part, for this part, all you're doing is changing the temperature to 3400 C, which is what? What's that in Kelvin? No, plus two. So it's 3673 K. So same, same numbers except for change the temperature out. What's the H again? H is up here. It's, that's the heat of reaction. 
Is it releasing heat or is it taking it in? If you got to add heat into the reaction, it's endo. But isn't it still like well, well, I don't know. It's going to be it's going to be one. It's going to be three forty six seven hundred, right? Minus thirty six seventy three times ninety eight point seven joules per kelvin. So, is this going to be bigger than this? Oh, well, this negative. So. If you do this, this is going to be minus 346,700 minus 3673 times 98.7. Now, now is it, it's going to be... And again, a negative times a negative is a positive. So this becomes minus 346,700 plus 362,525.1. So it's going to be 346,700 minus 362, 5, 2, 5. Why, why, hmm? The negative sign is that is that a negative sign above the line or what is that? Where? On the That's a negative sign because we it's we're using the same number as up here. Okay, that's why you put it there. So now this is going to be a it's going to come out to be positive this time, correct? Yep. So this is your it's going to be was it plus fifteen thousand ish? Yeah, eight hundred twenty-five. Five. Point one, and it's positive, so is it spontaneous? No. All right. So, no, because it's going to be this minus that, so it's going to be about 15,000. It's going to be this minus this, so it should be 15,000-ish. All right. <laughs> All right. Looks like we might get done before four. Oh, maybe not. Okay, boys and girls. Do we need to go through which ones are acid, bases, and salts? Do we need to dissociation it? It means break it up. So it would just be A, A plus OH. OH, is it balanced? Yeah. yeah. And this would and be B, A plus 2. A yep. <laughs> and on these guys, okay, boys and girls, guys, on these acid ones, this one's easy because it just breaks up into two pieces. Mm -hmm. This one, you only have to go the first breakup. All right, and that's going to be minus one. You could keep breaking it down, but you don't need to. All right. Now this one, remember this is where the metals become the bullies. The sodium is going to come over, kick the hydrogen out. So it's going to be NaCl plus a neutralization. What's one of our products always? H2O. There you go. And then check and see if it's balanced because 
Look at the instructions, the instructions here. It says complete and balance. So one sodium, one sodium, one chlorine, one chlorine, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one oxygen. We're balanced. Now, this one may be a little more difficult. KOH comes, or the K comes over. Potassium's only got a positive one charge, so it becomes this. Right? So now we have to put a 2 here. So we got our two potassiums right there and there. We got our one SO4 right there. Now I have two hydrogens plus two more hydrogens. So what do I got to put here to balance? I need, a, I need four totals on the left. Right. And then we end up with two oxygens. All right. This one, they're looking for the concentration of hydrogen ions. All right. And that is the concentration of hydrogen is equal to 10 to the negative pH. So that's going to be 10 to the negative 3.4, Yep. If you want to write it on your 3 by 5 card, that would be good. No. So you got to write it on the 3 by 5 card. Is it one-sided or two-sided? One-sided. So you got to write small. But a lot of it's, yeah, like I said, like use this as the basis for your card. This is the help sheet that's on classroom. You get that with the test, like we use just that sheet. No, you got to, no you can put it on no card. That's the rules that everybody, two out of three teachers made up. All right. And I have to do what they say. So. Why is that, Mr. Brindle? You're better. They should do use the Aren't you older? Don't you get like superiority? So, well, <laughs> so this is going to be 2.88 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, negative 4. All right. So on this one, it's kind of figured out for you. It's going to be 5.0 times 10 to the negative 1, because all you do is change the molarity to, to scientific notation. All right. And there you go. And that's equal to the... Now... They still want you to find H plus, but they're only giving you the OH concentration. But remember, 1 times 10 to the negative 14th equals hydrogen concentration times the OH concentration. So this is just a division problem. So it's going to be... 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 1.2 times 10 to the negative 1, 2, 3. So, so you're going to take 1 divided by 1.2, which is 0 0.833. And when you... Divide exponents, you subtract them, right? So minus 14 minus a minus 3, negative 11. But is that correct scientific <clears throat> notation? No, you got to move it. Don't you? So it's going to be 8.3 times 10 to the negative 12. All right. 
that was the easy stuff, kind of. Hmm? Oh, and this is capital M. There you go. <clears throat> what are you two doing over there? He has angry handwriting. <laughs> Looks okay. Maybe they're too sensitive. All right, now, girls and boys. <laughs> now, kids, Lowry, they got this reverse. Brunstead Lowry, I'm not sure why they reversed it, are different definition. Brunstead Lowry says an acid donates protein, protons and a base is accepts them. Now, what happened here is we got Hydrochloric acid and water. All right, protons, hydrogens. Now, if you look here, H2O became H3O plus, correct? So, which one's the acid over here on the left, and which one's the base? Um, left acid. This one's base. And the water became the base. But now, which one on, on this side? Which one can donate the hydrogens? That's the acid now, because does the chlorine have any hydrogens to donate? So that's the base. Now, the conjugate pairs are this, and this is where people got confused. We got acid and the base. And we got, and I'm just going to go acid base. All right. Conjugate pairs means one's an acid, one's a base, not acid, acid, base, base. Yeah. All right? So, now, amphoteric substances, that means it can be an acid or a base, and we know that one thing is always amphoteric because it looks like this. It has hydrogens or hydroxides. It can either donate. So which one's that? Water. Water is your amphoteric. Now, in this case, the water in A, the water was a base, but look down here in B. NH3 went to NH4. It grabbed a hydrogen, so which one's the acid now? H2O. H2O is the acid, so this is the base. But now, who's got more hydrogens on the right to donate? So this becomes the acid, this becomes the base, all right? So that's where your amphoteric came in. Water acted basic here, but acidic here. And then finally, is this the last of our stuff? Oof, man. No, that's not bad. All right, and then here we got H2SO4. This has no protons at all on it, so it's automatically the base. This is the acid. Now, ooh, it gets weird here, kids. <laughs> now we got to decide which one. This is scary because you got H, H, negative, negative. So... We're going to call it this because on this side it was the base, and so it grabbed the hydrogen. So on this side, they just flip rolls. All right. I don't know if it's an substance. Well, it can, it can be either, and that's only, in this case, water for us. Because sometimes water can accept protons, other times it donates protons. Amphoteric means it can do either. Water. Okay. All right. Now, don't let this scare you, the HCl with a two molar. Um, 
because if you break up HCl into H plus and HCl minus, it's still a one-to-one -one thing, so the hydrogen concentration is going to be 2.0 molar. And then you just take the negative log of 2.0. <coughs> and this is the same way, Hc2H3O2. Even when it breaks up, it's, it's still a one-to-one -one thing. So don't get too scared. So just take the negative logs there. This one's easy because... PH plus POH is equal to what? 14. So this is just going to be 14 minus 2.05, which is going to be 11.95. This, you got to figure the molarity. So it's going to be 3.54 grams divided by 36 and a half to get the moles. Then you're going to do the moles over 3 liters. All right. Once you get that, then you got the right molarity. So somebody take 3.54 divided by 36. Uh, 0.09. Uh, 0.09. Divided by three, what is that? Zero point oh three, which is three point times ten to the negative two. And this will be your H and take the negative log of three times ten to the negative two. This is the same thing here. All right, but you're going to get the pOH in this case because there's no hydrogen concentration. Mr. Brown, yep. the negative log of 3 times 10? To the negative 2. Yeah, just a zero with that. Or what, what well, the number will become positive then. So. Um, on there, is that an apple? Yeah. So what you got to do, turn on your side, and then start with parentheses. You're going to go parentheses 3, E, 2, Negative. Close the parentheses. Then take the log, and I get. Yes, this is a working. I get one point five two. So on the iPhone, you got to go parentheses. Three times ten to the negative two. Then you hit the log button. They're right there. They don't show. No, they don't show. I'm sorry, but can you just do that one more time? So you're going to go to parentheses, 3, EE, e, 2, plus minus sign. Then the log. It's it's funky on here. You didn't close the parentheses. you got to close the parentheses. So, parentheses, 3. Okay, wait, you didn't close the no, he's he doesn't have, he only closes the parentheses after he gets the three e e plus minus. Close. Now I got one point five two. Let me. Okay, hold on. I got three EE, -E, two negative. Close it. Log. I got 1.52. You got 1.52? Yeah. Do you not have any real calculators in here? No, I'm not the math department. Because you're, spo you're supposed to come with your TI 84s. I'm supposed to have one. Huh? Or your 280. Yeah. Now, when you do this one, when you do this one here, guys, you're going to get the POH instead. 
All right. Once you get the pOH, take 14 minus the pOH, and that'll give you the pH. Now, on this one, they're messing with you again. This one's 1 point. 2 times 10 to the 1, 2, negative 2. This one is going to be 1 times 10 to the negative 14th divided by 4.35 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. And this gives you, this will give you OH minus because this is the concentration of hydrogen here. You're basically only using a few different equations here. And then this one is going to be 14 minus 7.93 to give you the pOH. And then finally, we're at the end here. These two here, these two here, we come back to our initial molarity times your initial volume equals your final molarity times your final volume. So in this case, it's going to be 6 molar times 500 milliliters equals 1.5 molar times V final. So you have to solve for V final. This is just the titration dilution equation. They're the same thing. 2,000. All right. So that's 2,000 milliliters or 2 liters. And then this one is molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid equals the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. And so here we got 50 milliliters of the acid. We don't know the molarity of the acid. And we got 0 0.6 molar NaOH times 34.5 milliliters and you're solving for M.